It'll give you what you're supposed to factor out. But almost, almost exclusively, it's going to be whatever that is. X to the negative one fifth times two x to the negative one fifth minus seven x to the four fifths. Factor out. Oh shoot! I meant to say factor this out of that. Darn it! That's it. I saw a confused look. I'm like, oh, wait. this doesn't look anything like what we're doing. Factor this out of uh, what I gave you next. <laughs> That's what I mean. Once you get the hang of these, they go kind of quick. They really do. Once you really get the excellent rules, you know what they mean. We shouldn't be rushing through this stuff, but they're going to make more sense start going faster through them. It's kind of nice. So we're our factor. We're factoring x to the negative one fifth out of this two x to the negative one fifth minus seven x to the four fifths. And I, I told you that most of the time, what you're factoring out will be this this expression right there, or will be one of them at least. So when we factor out. That means we're dividing, term by term. So we're factoring out x to the negative one-fifth. Whatever you're factoring out, whatever they tell you, that's going to go in front of your parentheses because that's what you're dividing out, so you're factoring. On the inside, we get those two pieces of information, these two terms, by taking our first term and our second term and dividing by what we're factoring. So in other words, 2x to the negative one-fifth over factoring x to the negative one-fifth. And also we're going to have negative 7x to the four-fifths over x to the negative one fifth. Second term divided by what we're factoring. Did you guys show that on the paper? That's good, all right. Now, something special happens here. The reason why we're going to cross these out is because when you think about it, we are actually subtracting exponents. But when you subtract exponents, you have x to the negative one fifth minus negative one fifth. Negative one fifth minus negative one fifth gives you zero. x to the zero is one, so this is basically set to two times one. So this is, well, that's gone. Just like it works any other exponent, you cross those out because you know those exponents match up. And we subtract something that matches up exactly, you get zero. So those, there's no more x's, it's, it's one. So we add just a two out of that because we have the coefficient of two there. Now the other one's a different story. The other one says, well, I know I'm gonna have a minus seven. I know I'm still gonna have x because they're not matching up exactly, but I have the four fifths minus negative one fifth. Four fifths minus negative one fifth. I'm subtracting this exponent since we're dividing common bases. Now, when we think about it, four fifths minus negative one fifth minus a negative, that's still addition. We're going to get how much? Okay, five fifths, or we're going to get one. Yeah, exactly. Negative seven x to the first power. Five fifths, it's going to be seven minus seven x. If you want to check it with distribution, you can do it. Look at it. Two x to the negative one fifth, that's that. Minus 7x to the, this is 5 fifths minus 1 fifth, that's 4 fifths. So it still works with the whole distribution uh, checking thing. Dealey. Okay. Very mathematical. <laughs> yeah. How many people understood, understood what we talked about so far? Okay. Good. Patricia, you had a question. Yeah, um, I got negative 1, so you always have to put the 1 from the inside first. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, otherwise you're dividing this by this. We don't want to do that. Okay. We're dividing this by this, you're factoring out this. Okay, so this one has to go on the denominator every time. Otherwise you will get the opposite uh, sign on your exponents okay. every time. Okay. Good question, thank you for that one. Any other questions before we move on? I want to first remember on something. Do you guys remember how to take a root and write that as a fraction? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna be, does the y change? But instead of just having a, a root around that, I should have some sort of an exponent 
It should be, is it 10 over 5 or 5 over 10? 5 over 10. Because we do the power over the root. So we're going to do 5 tenths. Now, can you simplify 5 tenths? Yes. How much is 5 tenths? One half. Can you write one half back as a root? Yes. What type of root is it? Square root. Of y to what power? One. Well, that's, that's weird. What this means is the tenth root of y to the fifth actually equals square root of y. That's kind of cool, right? This is one way that you can use fractional exponents to simplify roots. You take your root. You write it as a fraction. You simplify those fractions because that's how we know how to simplify, right? It's fractions. You write them back as a root. It makes things a lot easier to do. Isn't that easier to deal with? Doesn't that look a lot better than that one? It's kind of cool, right? Kind of we just did that just by manipulating some of these roots. Let's try this with one more. Now, does this work all the time? No, no, not all the time. I mean, if you had like seven in here, that wouldn't work. You'd have y to the seven tenths, and that, that you can't simplify that. However, if you can write as a fraction that is simplifiable, then of course you can simplify that. Can you write this? Ooh, that's a mess of garbage, isn't it? Can you write this as something to a fractional exponent? Let's try it. What do you think I'm going to write a to? a to what power? So what we've just identified is that when I have a root and some powers in here, it goes to both of them. That's actually one of your, your exponent rules. Since these things are exponents, that's an exponent. These are exponents. It goes to both those exponents. A to the 6 ninths, you're right. And then N to the, what do you think? Are you seeing how to get the 6 ninths and the 3 ninths? Are you sure? Yes. So we have the, the power over root. We have power over root. And we're going to do power over root. For example, I feel okay with that so far. Can you simplify those fractions? Yes. yes. So what you give is one third. Yeah, the three goes into all of that stuff. So far, so good. Yeah. Now, can you write that back as a root? Third root. Third. Why a third root? Because that's what they'll have. Okay. The denominators are three. That means that we're going to certainly have a cube root. Uh, a to what power, ladies and gentlemen? Square. Square. And n to what power? First. Does this represent that okay for you? Mm -hmm. Then we're done. Now, one thing that could potentially happen, uh, what if one of these is simplifiable and one of them is not? Then could you write that back as one root? You'd have to make sure you have the same denominator if you're going to write that back as one root. One last thing that we can do. How would you um, write it out for the final answer if instead of getting both the, up there on the bottom one had like the ninth or something? Like, would you have to have two squares? Yeah, you'd have to have two different rooms. You'd have to have it actually look a lot like this. Oh, okay. Okay. However, I can, I can show you kind of what to do with this. Okay. Which I'm going to do. We have a square root of y times a cube root of y. Is there any way that we can write this as one root? I don't know. In order to see that, maybe we're going to translate this into some fractions because we know that fractions are, ironically, a lot easier to deal with than these roots in our head because we're familiar with fractions at least. So let's go ahead and let's write square root of y and the cube root of y as some fractional exponents. Uh, everybody in here, what's the first one? y to what power, please? That wasn't even close to everybody. Oh my gosh. Um, tired. Come on now, folks. Why do they be at one half? Time. We have times, so times. Why to what power for the next one? Okay, that's better. Hey, hey. Can you combine those? You have common bases. You have exponents. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Which one? We add them. Yeah, just like just like we did. A, not over there. Previous example. We distributed. You add those exponents. So if we add these together, what's one half plus one third? Can you do one half plus one third? Well, not the way it is, but maybe find a common denominator. You could do one half plus one third. Do it in your calculator if you'd like. Five sixths. 
five six. You get five six. Mm -hmm. Why did five sixths? Can you take y to the five sixths and write it back as a root? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What type of root do I have? A fifth root or sixth root? Sixth root. Um, y to the fifth. Here's what this says. This equals that. You can take two roots and make it into one root. Now, what? How? One root, by the way. <laughs> that was a lot in this class. Okay. How do you? What, what's the whole process? When you, when you think about it, these are fractions. If you have a look at the board. If you have a different root, what you have is a different denominator. So the process of combining roots is the same process as finding a common denominator. That's it. That's really all this is. You're finding a common root. That's the same thing as saying a common denominator. That's what you do when you combine those fractions. You make them into fractions, find a common denominator, use that to add them together, it will give you a common root. Rich can feel okay about what we've talked about so far today. I got a quick question. Yeah. So like, you know, in the previous example, if you would have two square roots, would that be the second step to actually get your final answer? Yeah, um, except what's going to happen is most likely in this case, you probably get this back again. What happens, or or something that looks similar that may be reduced by a, a certain factor. Okay. Now, what we just did here, we, we kind of are, are simplifying these roots. We're going to take that another step. We're going to keep going on how to simplify this stuff. Are you ready? Yeah. Did that all make sense to you? Yeah. Good. Remember this stuff. You need to go back and look at this. Um, a couple notes on how to study for, because I, I, I was talking to some students, and no one ever really teaches you how to study for math, right? You, you study for English, you study for science, you use flashcards and all that stuff. It doesn't really work all that well for math. Um, here's some ideas on how to study for math. First thing, studying has to be spiraled, which means that you cannot just look at it once and have it perfectly in your head for the test. Math does build on itself, but we cover many, many different topics and different examples. So, the week before your test, what you should be doing is going back and reviewing the first section that we covered. Every day, spend 15 to 20 minutes looking at the old stuff before you start the new stuff. Does that make sense to you? You have to do that, because you will forget it, I guarantee it. Even I forget the stuff. I forgot all about math 4C. Uh, that's calculus. I forgot all about third year calculus. I can't even do it anymore unless I really, really look at it. All right? And that happens for you guys, because I, I know that stuff, I knew it very, very well. You guys are just learning this, right? You need to spiral that information. Uh, also, when you're studying for a math test, don't spend four hours studying the night before a test. It doesn't help you. Instead, what you should be doing, spend 30 to 40 minutes, take a break. Your brain cannot absorb math for that length of time in a row. So study for a little while, take a break, come back and study some more for it. Also, you need to be practicing the this, this stuff that I give you for your review. If I give you a review sheet, you need to know it's going to be very, very similar to your test. Practice those problems. Also, when you're doing your homework and the review sheet, it should not be this way. It should be, look at my notes, do a problem. Go to the next problem. I have to refer back to my notes, then do that problem. Next problem, I have to look back at my notes, then do that problem. If you're having to look at your notes every single time that you do a problem, you do not know that material well enough. Okay, you don't. What you're doing is you're using that those notes as a crutch, uh, and I need to I need to kick your crutch out from underneath you. Okay? Ha! No, I'm just kidding. That would be me. Uh, but I need, you need to remove that crutch on your own. Use the notes to do some of those problems. Sure, if you get stuck, absolutely. But eventually, put the notes away. Do the rest of your homework. That needs to be the process that this goes. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. That will help some of you who are, are kind of struggling to to make it on these tests. If you do what I tell you. 